Just always remember this. You're never alone, number one. There's nothing that you're going through that no trader has, has gone through before and no trader after you will, get, will continue to go through. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I want to wish uh, all our friends who are uh, celebrating the Easter uh, Eastern holiday, uh, happy Easter, right? Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter Sunday. Hope everybody is doing well. May God be the continued light in your life. Have faith in life. God will always be on your side. So God bless everybody, not only our Christian friends, but all our friends around the world, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, anything, Buddhist, anything that you practice, God bless. And hope everybody, everybody stays uh, well. Blessings to all. So let's talk about the market. Um, I, I, I thought this was a very frustrating week. I think that's the best way I, I, can, I can describe it. Um, nothing to do with the monetary side. Um, up a little bit, down a little bit in the markets it, it is fine. Um, I, I felt it was a very frustrating week because number one, it was a three-day week. And um, we started talking about the early parts of the week about building below the 50-day moving average. As you can see here, uh, that's what the Qs did, right? It, they, they built below the 50-day the, the moving average for four consecutive days, but you could see how tight the channels were. And my, my biggest issue of this week was once we got below the 50-day moving average, the next day we went sideways, which was fine. I have no problem with that. You kind of call that an inside day. The next day after the inside day, we should have sold off. And my whole game plan was, well, let's wait for the sell-off. Let's wait for the sell-off. It's obviously there's no reason for the market to rally because we just gapped down, had an inside day, and now the next day we should sell back off. So we rallied. So I didn't participate in the rally because I was just sitting there and I'm like, well, what, why, is the, why is the market rallying? It doesn't make any sense. And what happened was the next day, the market gapped down, pretty much erased the whole rally pre-market and then literally went sideways for the rest of the day. So it was super duper, it was super duper frustrating because you're either going to, we were either gapping down and the average true range of the gap down was completely erasing your, your research the night before short entries and then the next day when we were supposed to continue with that gap down, because again, we're continuing to build below the 50 day moving average, it absolutely rallied for no reason, only for the next day to gap down, lose the whole rally, literally pre-market and do nothing for the rest of the day. And that was very frustrating. And I found myself doing a lot of sitting. I found some trades that stalled out. You know, some worked, some didn't, but the point is it was one of the, and I said this in the webinar, it was probably the most Mentally, I, that's the best way of saying it. mentally the most frustrating weeks I've had because I was on the right side of the market. I was waiting for confirmation on the right side of the market. Some days it came, some days it didn't. But when it came, it came like at 3.30, like after I logged off. Because again, sitting there for five, six hours and you're trying to be as patient as possible, right? You're sitting there, but you know, you're a human being. I'm a human being. I don't care. I'm trading this thing for 23 years. You sit there for one, two days. Go up, go up, down, go up a little bit, go down a little bit, go up a little bit, go down a little bit. And you're not really getting anywhere. And you're saying to yourself, well, Jesus Christ, something has to give here, right? Something has to put us in, in, in a position of, of follow through. And we did not get that, right? And, and after looking back at it, I, I decompressed, uh, I decompressed yesterday and decompressed, you know, today uh, is a day off. Today is Good Friday. Uh, you'll probably be seeing this video Saturday or Sunday. That's why I wish everybody a happy Easter Sunday. Um, but more important was I, I kind of took a step back and just and just really reflected on on the week. And the most important part that I got for the week was that it was pretty much like um, like a, a regular three day week, right, or four day week. Like um, if you guys remember last uh, Thanksgiving, remember how tired the market was on Thanksgiving, it was just like going sideways, sideways, and the ranges were contracting. And then Monday came, everybody came back, and we started re restarted that sell off. That's what it feels like to me, right? And it really did. And as much as I, you know, pretty got pretty much gotten very little accomplished this week, the one thing that I did do was reflect and, you know, reflect in the past, where I would be, you know, really aggressively trading the market, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and got nowhere, get frustrated, and entering the next week, I was completely burnt out. 
at least going into this week, I continue to be sell bias because again, now we are nestled four days below the 50 day moving average. And I have to assume when everybody comes back after, um, after this three day weekend, I have to assume this tight range that we're seeing here is going to be val you know is going to be confirmed one way or another and all those channels that we saw whether it was uh, uh an amazon whether it was facebook apple whatever the case may be i think all those channels that were going up and down up and down up and down to the downside because again at the end of the week we saw about 3.9 percent decline in the in the nasdaq 100. i i do believe the fact that we were so tight is not an indication that bulls are defending levels i think there's more of an indication that sellers were not available to kind of continue the selling and again the longer we sit uh, below the 50-day moving average, the higher probability this channel uh, starts moving lower and we start attacking uh, the bottom of the range here. So yes, frustrating, absolutely. I, I, I don't think I've... I've um I don't think I've had a weekend update that, that said, hey, you know, probably in the last 12 years I've been hosting this webinar. I don't think the last tw tw 12 years I've been uh, putting out these updates, it means turn around and say, man, this is the most most frustrating. No, I don't even want to use the word frustrating, but more, more conscious, lethargic, well, yeah, let's use the word frustrating weeks I could possibly imagine because nothing was expanding. And I think that's the most important part of the week. You kind of just take it at one of those scenarios that, you know what, it is what it is. It was almost like a holiday shortened weekend, what it actually is. A lot of people are out. A lot of people are on vacation. A lot of kids ha have spring break, right? And the most important part is the market technically is still the way I'm looking at the market. I, I believe the right way. And if we start attacking the bottom of the range here and the queues start losing uh, this 338 level and we start losing the bottom of the Bollinger Band, I think we will go lower. And the one thing that I will express you know for this kind of scenario here if you guys remember before uh before putin attacked right uh before uh the cases of covid were at least being controlled right we were already going lower you guys remember the first time we broke the 50-day moving average this it wasn't you know it wasn't even even a scenario yet that Putin was about to invade. This is way before that. So we're kind of, you know, what we started living with here was COVID. And now we're living with here with COVID kind of, you know, kind of on the tail end, knock on wood, uh, the Putin, the, the whole Putin fiasco, the war in the Ukraine. Not so not only are we, we living with that, but now we are looking at a scenario of just letting technicals take over. And that's what I think uh, we are technology, obviously, uh, the weakest levels, uh, you know, you can see all these names, you know, look like they're about to resume uh, Amazon. Uh, I really like it this week. If this thing starts losing the bottom channel here, I think it get hit. NVIDIA just does it like NVIDIA. Like I'll give you a perfect example how things weren't following through. Um, I, you know, there was we had a pivot on NVIDIA 225 to the upside. Right. And you can see a 212. Terrible, right? No, you can see there was a pivot there at 225 to the upside, taking out the previous day's high, which it did. Took out 225, took out 227. And I knew, right? I knew they, there was a level there at 228 that it had to break. If you look at the 60 minute view from the previous week, you can see why that 228 level was so important. And it didn't take out the 228 level. I didn't make any sales, yada, yada, yada. I wound up losing a couple bucks on it. And, you know, it is, and that's kind of what was my point about like the whole week of, there wasn't enough strength to the upside to get it through, but there wasn't enough downside aggression, right? To kind of get it punch the hole into this three day channel to the bottom of the range. But I think that kind of goes away with the market participants uh, returning for uh, Monday's session. The, the one thing that I, that I will give a piece of advice to, especially to the new traders, you're gonna have a lot of highs and lows in this business, okay? You have a lot of lows, especially in your first three years of this business, and you're supposed to in a weird way. It's, it's almost like you're, it's almost like your initiation into a fraternity, right? You go through all the crap, the, the founding members and all the pledge brothers and sisters and sororities, they're gonna put you through something called hell week, right? I've never went to college, so I couldn't tell you, but from what I see on television, right? or movies, that's kind of what I see. So they put you through hell week. They put you through all these embarrassing things. They put you to uh, unsettling situation, embarrassing situations, things that you don't want to go through, but that's kind of what trading is. Your first three to five years, you're putting into all these uncomfortable situation that you're not comfortable with, that you don't want to go through, that you don't need to go through. You, don't want, you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy, but get, hell, guess what? Every trader goes through it. So when you get a week that might be frustrating or you can't get going or you're sabotaging yourself or putting yourself in a position that you, you know you're not supposed to, doing a million different things 
that could absolutely derail your career, just always remember this. You're never alone, number one. There's nothing that you're going through that no trader has, has gone through before and no trader after you will, will continue to go through. You know, I'm doing this 23 years. I sat there for the week. I wanted to literally just take, if I took a pencil, right? Pencil, pen, stab it to my eye. Yeah, that's what kind of week it was. But you know what it is? You got to always look at the big body of work. You always have to look at the fundamental structure of your long career and say, look, there will be, you know, there will be peaks. There will be a lot of valleys, right? There will be everything in between. Get over, it, right? Get over. It. You can't feel sorry for yourself. You can't sit there, you know, you know, crying yourself to sleep for no apparent reason. You're alive, right? You're alive. The name of the game is you're alive. You're breathing. You're happy. People love you. That's the biggest, you know, that's the biggest point of life. Your relationships, your, your family, your friends, your dogs, your cats, right? Everything, anything that's good in your life. Focus on that. What we do from the, from 9.30 to 4 o'clock is kind of the end game, right? Nobody's forcing you to do it. You don't need to do it. But we do it because there's a reason for it. And, and again, if you're serious about your career, and, I, and I, I talked about this through good days, through bad days, if you're serious about your career, you have to have thick skin. You have to realize that it's not just you. You don't have a dark cloud in front of you. It's the market sometimes. Sometimes you just can't figure out why the market's doing things and why the market can't do things. It's just it's just the reality of what you know what trading is, what every investor investor professional uh, goes through and has gone through and it will go through. So when you have a tough week, whether it's mentally, um, whatever monetary, whatever the case may be, just always take a step back, take a deep breath. There's always a bigger picture. And the most important thing is just accept it. It's just part of the journey. Embrace it and move forward. So, yeah, I mean, going into this week, um, I, look, unless you are, you know, trading some oil names, which like I, I really like this little rig. Um, I, I really like this little rig. Check out for all you guys are smaller cap names. It's an oil name. Rig used to be like a $160, $170 stock. This thing is just basing out of this range here. Keep an eye on this thing. They're coming for uh, the May five and six dollar calls. Look, look at the last move it made here. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts getting above, uh, getting above now this four seventy level. Maybe it goes back to the highs. I really, really like that. Um, Target, I really like. Look at Target is just basing out here. It had a nice breakout, consolidating above this area. If Target starts getting above this two thirty nine level on a close, there's a lot of room up. There's a lot of names that look pretty good that that have nothing to do with technology. But if you are a technology, uh, if you are a technology trader. There's some phenomenal channels to the downside. I, I, I really like Square to the downside. I'm gonna watch this week. Um, you know, keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts losing uh, the bottom of this channel here. Um, I think it could go, right? I think this thing can, can go here. Uh, I, I think it's one of those names that if they start breaking down, uh, if they start breaking down below the 50 day moving average, um, I think you could have a, a really good move uh, back to the downside, right? This is one of those names that you know, follows through the 50 day uh, could get hit. Right? Everybody see that? That looks pretty good. Um, I like snow. I like snow for this week as well. Uh, breaking down below this channel here. Um, you know, nice looking chart. If it starts confirming the bottom of the channel here, it could be look good. Again, let me, let me just show you this chart on Square. I think the the camera might have frozen up a little bit. You see the 50-day moving average on Square, right? If it starts losing the 50-day moving average on Square, I really like that. Uh, in the video we talked about all week, looks like it's going lower. Look at Apple, right? Look at Apple uh, is sitting there right on support. If it loses the, the bottom of the channel here, it goes lower. Uh, even Tesla, with all the crazy news going on, first Elon, you know, they're talking about tweets about uh, potentially doing another stock split. Now he's buying Twitter you know, 9% here, you know, stake, and now he wants to be, get, get above 15%, so you have a control, controlling say, and they don't want to give him that, so now the company's issuing a poison pill, an anti-takeover device mechanism with all that soap opera there, but then end of the day, Tesla has a bottom channel here. If it starts breaking down below the bottom channel here, there's a shot it breaks down a level. Again, you can see the top of the range here. Top of the range, it stops several times. It's getting very, very tight. Eventually, this thing is either going to snap the bottom of the range here or snap the top. So we're definitely, definitely ready for both. But the most important part, uh, the most important part going into this week is just relax, right? If we have another tight week, it's all part of the business. It's all part of the journey. But the most important thing is be prepared, right? Be prepared for whatever comes. And the most important thing is go with confidence once the candles starts to expand. Guys, have a great day. God bless everybody. Happy Easter. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.